Now, I've told this story before, and this was back in 2009. I believe this was a year that the movie, the Avatar movie, first came out. I think that's the year it came out, yeah. And I was visiting family in Kentucky, and we had stopped by. After we had went out, we had went out to dinner together, and we had stopped by a local uh, family video store to rent some movies. And there was this kid at the counter, okay, the kid who was checking out our movies for that day. And I noticed on his arm, okay, he had gotten the words Avatar in the movie font and the color tatted on his forearm. And I remember standing there as he was checking us out, and I, and I asked him, I said, is that the tap from the movie? And he was like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. have you seen it? And I said, no, nah, no, nah, not yet. I mean, I, I think the movie had just been out for two weeks at this point. And then he said, oh, man, you got to see it. I've seen it nine times already. Man, I'd sell my soul just to see it again for the first time. That, that to this day sticks with me, that he said that, that he said he would sell his soul. And this was before I was actually a Christian. He said, oh, man, I would sell my soul just to see it again for the first time. OK. And I remember looking over at my dad and I was like, I was just thinking, bro, is it that serious? Is it really that serious? OK. And I was lost. Now, now think about this. Think about the things that the secular world makes idols out of. Think about the mindset of the mind that is not regulated through a biblical worldview. For example, have you ever heard of Comic-Con? It's an international yearly comic book convention in San Diego. And I used to live in California. OK. You have a bunch of 20 to 40 year old men and women dressed up like their favorite video game characters walking around like it's normal, okay? And see, here's the problem. We have billions of people walking around this planet, walking on this planet who do not know why they actually exist, okay? See, I perfectly, and because of that, I perfectly understand why people are so depressed, suicidal, and hopeless. I mean, look at the idols that they choose to put their hope in. Video game characters, okay? Movie characters. Now, here's a clip of R.C. Sproul talking about a time in which he found himself at an Avatar convention. You know, we had, a, Steve and I, a few weeks ago, we were here for another uh, conference, and we were having breakfast in one of the hotels, and <laughs> noticed they had a convention going on there, and it was called the Avatar Convention, and people were invited to join this and get peace and reconciliation, and well, I wondered what that was about, and Steve uh, and I were having breakfast, this lady came, a very charming woman, and she had a little brochure about Avatar, and she told us that the whole idea of this was that to help uh, to be empathetic with people out there, which is a noble thing. And, and I, I was wondering about the name of the group and everything, and Steve asked her something about God, and, and the lady uh, indicated, she said, well, we all believe in some kind of God. We just know him through different, many different views of God. And I said, no, there's only one God. He has one name. Well, I was, was taken back by that. And, Steve started to tell her about Jesus and, and the mediatorial office of Christ. And, and it's completely right overhead. But then afterwards, we talked about it. So why is it called what it's called? Avatar. What's an avatar? An avatar is a specific incarnation of a deity. And the basic assumption of this whole thing is that God is not just given one incarnate son, one monogenes, only begotten, but there are many avatars, Mohammed, Buddha, Confucius, you know, and so on. Arson um, Sproul. Yeah, right. And, uh, and here I found out that this is somehow related to Scientology or something. That's at least what somebody told me. That's hearsay. I don't know for sure. But, but that's where we are in this culture. But don't you think they probably all think we can all be avatars? Sure. Of the divine? Um, you know, I, had, I told you about the conversation I had with a woman from a new age, went to a new age camp, and I was on the train with her, and I was sitting at lunch, and she was talking to the lady ne next to me. Excuse me, she was all excited. She says, I've been at this camp for two years learning all about New Age. And she says, and I've learned so much, and I'm so happy. She says, I found out that, that uh, I'm God. And I didn't say a word. I'm just sitting there, and this lady's talking to her, and this young woman keeps looking at me for my reaction. And finally, she said, what do you think? And I said, well, I said, really, this is the first time I ever was on a train sitting across the table from the, <laughs> from the Almighty <laughs> at the table. And she laughed. He, and then I looked at her. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, you don't really believe that you're God, do you? <laughs> and she said, well, not really. <laughs> there was two years of New Age uh, indoctrination down the drain. You know, you don't really believe that. For everything. But that's, what, that's where this goes. Yes. Exactly. It's like that guy Crouch saying, as if you're uh, born again of the Spirit, you're as much the incarnation of God as Jesus was. And when he made that comment on national television, he was deluged with 
complaints from scholars and theologians say, why in the world are you teaching such a thing in your program? I saw the program after that, and he says, I'm getting all these criticisms from these scholars and theologians who didn't like it when I said that anybody who's uh, born of the Spirit is as much the incarnation of God as Jesus. And he says, but let me tell you, i say it again. If you're born again of the Holy Spirit, you're as much the incarnation of God as Jesus. You, know, you just want to pass out when you hear that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly.